Hello, welcome to Microfiche Microphone. I'm Micah, and on this channel we look at microfiche from the past, old newspaper articles in the public domain. We look at them with our modern eyes, our modern perspective, and see what we can learn from them. On this microfiche time capsule, we are looking at the Ladies Home Journal from April 1884. Now, this or this series was originally called What Women Want to Know, and this time it just seems like it's been put under editorial notes. I'm not sure why it's no longer given a title, but it seems to be the same kind of information as the others. So I'm going to continue to read them, even if they're not titled officially the way um, it was before. So I'm going to skip over their information about how to pay for your subscription. So let's take a look. Just now is an excellent time for looking over the family wardrobe to see that those cooler changes which may be needed by and by are in readiness, to make new if required or to repair the old. Uh, April, I guess? Interesting. Um, so I guess they're like, hey, get out your cooler clothes for summer so that you can make sure that they don't have any holes. I mean, that's always a good idea, I guess. To write a good love letter, you ought to begin without knowing what you are going to say and finish without knowing what you have written. <laughs> okay, um, that's, I don't, I disagree, but if you say so. Begin without knowing what you are we're going to say. Okay, let it be a little spontaneous from the heart. And that, but like, not knowing what you have written, how do you, are you just supposed to forget, like, honestly? Um... Sorry if you can hear the screaming. There are some children playing in the like back area behind our house. <laughs> like they're just playing. I promise nobody's dying. <laughs> I don't know if the microphone could pick that up. So if it can't, I'll cut this out. But that's what that is. <laughs> it's not even my children. <laughs> All right. All right. Moving on. A census of a Philadelphia boarding school of forty-eight girls showed that one could make bread. One knew how to fry oysters. Three knew how to broil beefsteak, 48 could embroider, and 47 dance. So everybody could embroider? I think that's the only one everybody could do? I don't understand the point of this census. <laughs> this, like, census. They're calling it a census. That's not a census, dude. That's a questionnaire. <laughs> but I'm not sure what the point of it is. Moving on. If any person calls you stingy because you are trying to live within your income... His opinion will have but little weight with sensible people. Okay, I like that. Like, you're just trying to live within your income. People are like, oh, come on, live a little. And you're like, no, really, I can't afford it. You know, calm down. And, like, that's actually a legit answer. It's okay to not be able to afford something. Yeah. I like that they took off the stigma of that. A clever woman has made a very effective stair carpet of scraps of cloth neatly sewed together as in patchwork and edged with scarlet two inches wide. The pieces are all the same size. That's a great idea. I like that they're just giving you ideas of how to, like, make something that you might not be able to buy. Beware of papers that are promulgated by lotteries. Such papers are frauds to every intent and purpose. The publishers of such papers are utterly without conscience, and if they do not cheat you in the first place, simply get you where you, they can cheat you more effectively the next time. Uh, like, I'm not aware of papers that are promulgated by lotteries. I mean, does anybody know of any? Um, I, I am not a big fan of lotteries in, in general, so if, like, I would agree, kind of stay away from things that lotteries are, like, the driving force behind. Because they cheat you more effectively, yeah, that's kind of what lotteries do, and I, that's why I'm not a big fan of them. I think that the chances of winning are so low. The amount of money you spend over a long period of time is so high that it's just not even worth considering buying a lottery ticket. In fact, I, I've never actually bought a lottery ticket because I know that I'm not going to win if I buy one. So why should I even bother? So I, I agree that it's like lotteries, but I've never heard of papers connected to lotteries. But if they say there was some, I'm sure there were. Ugly back of a splint rocking chair can be improved by covering it with a strip of drab linen with a narrow border in outline stitch on each edge. Slip one end between the strips of wood at the top and bring the other end under at the bottom and fasten them secure securely. 
If tidies are put on these chairs, the only way to keep them in place is to tie them with the rounds at the top. If done with ribbons, look, this looks pretty. Okay, I like that. Like, here is a way of, of pepping up your old rocking chair. Like that. Make an overall dress protector to wear over your afternoon dresses. A dress protector, so you mean like an apron? <laughs> okay. Tear off three widths of gingham or other suitable material of the same length as your dress skirts. Sew together and gather it so it will set smoothly, and then cut a plain waist rather low in the neck to prevent mussing your neckline, and sew to the skirt. Bind the neck and armholes. Sew to the skirt. And really? Bind the neck and armholes and put a large button on each shoulder. Put buttons down the back from the neck to waist, leaving the skirt to hang loose. Next, make a pair of short sleeves, of shirt sleeves, buttoning at the wrist, and put a button hole at the top. The sleeves need not be used unless your dress sleeves will not roll up. With this outfit on, you can prepare supper in your best silk without danger of spoiling it. But if you're sewing it to the skirt, then you're not going to be able to get it off afterwards. So at first I thought it was like an apron, but it sounds more like another dress over top of the one you're wearing. Like that's slightly strange to me. I guess it's a good idea, but like I'm going to have to look up some pictures. I'll post some pictures if I can find a picture of this, but this is like that. That's just wild to me. Rub your black walnut sewing machine tables, your cabinet, organ, or any other piece of solid furniture you may have with a cloth moistened with kerosene oil, or and you will quickly see an improvement, but keep it away from varnish. No, that's great advice, because anything made out of hard wood, you have to rub down with oil. You can't, like, scrub it with like you can, like, a tile floor, for example. And so, letting people know this is a thing, yeah, that's a good idea. A sour look and impatient gesture, a cross word at the breakfast table is enough to make the best food indigestible and spoil a day. Yeah, I agree. Like, be kind to each other. Yeah, be kind to each other. To spend two or three moments on rising and retiring in rapid friction of the whole surface of the body with the hand is a more rational treatment of the skin and a more health-promoting operation for most persons than a daily cold water bath. What the flippin' heck? To spend two or three moments on rising and retiring in rapid frictions of the whole surface of the body. So you're standing up and down, like laying down, standing up, laying down, standing up. Okay, I guess. That's a, that's a decent exercise. It'll get your blood moving, that's for sure. Uh, and the rapid frictions of the whole surface of the body with the hand. Like, well, once again, that'll get your blood pumping. And more health-promoting operations than a daily cold water bath. I, I'm slightly speechless by this. Like, it depends on the point. If you are trying to get clean, then the bath is better. If you're trying to wake up, then I guess this would make more sense. But, <laughs> like, it depends on what the point is of the activities, you know? Bitters. All bitters offered for sale contain alcohol. Many take them in place of brandy, whiskey, rum, or other forms of spirits, persuading themselves that they are reforming as to their beverages. Okay, that's a good point. Um, I've heard this. I've heard this before. Any kind of bitters, so like apple bitters or like, um, you know, I'll post some pictures once again if I find any. Um, I, I don't know what was available back then. Yeah, it, so I understand. Like, that's, that's actually a decent warning because if you're trying to go with no alcohol and then you, tr you drink bitters, then you're not going with no alcohol, yeah? You're not avoiding alcohol. No Norwegian girl is allowed to have a bow until she can bake bread and knit stockings. And as a consequence, every girl can bake and knit long before she can read or write. And she doesn't have to be coaxed into her industry either. So who made this into law? <laughs> I'm sorry, but I very sincerely doubt that this is a law. What I think is this might be a tradition. Uh, in which case that's not a bad tradition. I mean, you know, make yourself useful in the sense of, you know, back then women were not able to really get jobs, or at least not very many jobs. So, you know, having a skill that would be helpful that you might you have to be able to bake bread and knit stockings. I mean, those are pretty practical things. You're going to have to do that to feed yourself anyway, um, and to feed and clothe yourself, whether or not you have someone else to feed and clothe. So, no, this is, this is actually 
decent advice. This is like, you have to be able to take care of yourself before you can consider having a boyfriend and, you know, that might eventually lead to marriage, you know? You have to be self-sufficient. Sponges, which are to be used in the bathroom, may be softened by boiling for a few minutes in three waters. After each time of boiling, rinse it in cold water and put it on the stove again in a pan of cold water. Really? Like, I think that they used sea sponges back then. I wonder if that was an actual thing. Once again, like, actually, I'm going to Google that real quick. Sea sponges used for washing. Oh, yeah, that's a thing. And it does look pretty dang hard. I'm not going to lie. Um, so, no, I could see this as decent uh, amount of good advice. It sounds to me like boiling it and then cooling it off and rinsing it again and then boiling it again. It sounds like they're getting kind of mineral deposits off of it, which would feel kind of gritty on your skin. So I'm thinking that that was the point. Interesting. Like I had never really thought of them using sea sponges back in the day. I guess it kind of makes sense, but I don't know. Like I always pictured them using like washcloth, like a just a regular scrap of rag to like wash themselves with. I never really thought of them, you know, using sea sponges. <laughs> I guess it was a thing. I guess it was a thing. It's interesting. Anyway, I, I've learned something today. How about you? I think most of these were pretty innocuous. I don't agree with everything they say, but they were a little bit random. Uh, I really am very curious about some of the like fashions they used to wear because some of the way they talk about it it's like like why would you wear a dress over another dress <laughs> you know in order to protect your pretty dress uh, I don't know like yeah I get aprons but that did not sound like one that is so weird to me it was full length sleeves goes all the way up to your neck um, actually no I think they said it was lower than your neckline yeah rather low in the neck to prevent like mussing up your neckline but then like how would you protect then the bodice you know what I mean I don't know it seems really weird <laughs> yeah you do each their own you know I mean that's uh, that's the culture of the day I found that really interesting a lot of, of very general advice would be like here's how to you know spruce up a room that's pretty cool I love the insight into the age really. I think that's what I find interesting. So I hope you do too. If you do, like the video down below, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you in the next video.